Welcome folks to another episode in the Carving X series. Um, this is Max from Woodsmith Finest and today we're looking at a completely different axe actually. So this is the Ransfuss Brooks Small Forest Axe. Um, what is this thing doing in the Carving X series? It's a pretty good question, so let's find out. So we're looking today at the Small Forest Axe by Kensfors Brooks, which is a um, Swedish axe manufacturer. These axes, as you probably know, they're hand forged. They're using templates and uh, big um, power hammers, but nonetheless, they're all made by um, particular smiths. You have uh, the name or the initials of the smith up here, and it's a yeah, it's a Swedish axe manufacturer with a lot of history. And these axes are very common around the world. The overall quality of Francois Brooks axes is known to be excellent. There is every now and then little Monday product, so to say. But if you're thinking about how many axes those guys put out, the pro this is for me just hands down the best production axe in the world. It's just my opinion, you know. I've handled other axes, Wetterlings, Husqvarna, and as far as some um, consistency of quality, the handles, you know the grinds and all kind of other little things and as well the customer service these are the best, best production axes in the world you know so um for me this here actually right now is a cut in a custom um axe sheath made by me these are retailed in, in at the canadian outdoor equipment shop in mississauga um, and i come came up with a certain design i gonna um i made already a video about and i'm gonna make another video about that has a lot of different features and they fit a lot of um, different axes around this size actually. So why am I bringing this axe in here? Or well, what is this axe? First of all, this is the smallest, for me, smallest double-handed pack axe from Grantsfors Brooks. I wouldn't say in general, but from Grantsfors Brooks. That means this is an axe I can use with two hands for a certain limited amount of felling bucking, splitting and carving probably. It has its limitations, you know, if you're talking about the Grants for Brooks small first axe, I put um, a little bit of footage in here about chopping and also did a lot of bucking with this one, but it, you know, it has its limitations. Anything that is thicker than, you know, maybe eight inches or something like that. I would really love to have, I mean, it can do it, but I would love to have a different axe. A longer handle, a little bit heavier head, head, um, a longer cutting edge. So we're going really in, in direction of felling axe, but this is not a felling axe. This is a, a great pack axe. If you're going for canoeing, if you want to put this in your backpack, you know, on the sides or maybe in some kind of axe um, loop or something like that, or even on your belt. I mean, I have one of my custom belt loops on here. I mean, it is a little bit long, it goes all the way down to my calf, but, um, you know, I can still see this being carried in one of those loops, maybe under your arm, you know. It wouldn't get in the way if you had one of those loops on some kind of um, leather strap or something like that, this carried on the, under your arm. This wouldn't be in the way and the handle goes down to your hip like that, you know. So this is really packable, but at the same time I have two-handed capabilities, okay. I'm putting some more detail shots in here. Um, I don't like to stop the video and, and everything all the time. I just want to keep it flowing, but I'm going to put a couple of um, detail shops, shots in here. So I'm just going to step aside a little bit. The head, as you can see, is um, something like a typical Swedish pattern. Um, we've got some ears going a little bit further down here. We've got a nice thick pole that gives us a little bit of a counterbalance on one hand. On the other hand, this is, of course, an axe where you can use the pole for, um, you know, pounding in tent stakes and all kind of other tasks where you might need a nice pronounced pole. Always keep in mind that you don't want to hit metal with these poles because as far as I know, these poles are not heat treated or let's rather say not hard. They are soft. I think the whole axe rather has a differential heat treat. Usually, you know, axes have with a softer, body of 1045 I think carbon steel and then a differential heat treated bit 
which was probably goes down about two inches to here. Okay, enough clumsy description. This kind of pattern, and um, I gotta put again some pictures on the side here. This kind of pattern has straight cheeks. What that means is that from the the upper part of the bit here, which we would call the toe, down to the heel, there is basically one parallel line, so the cheeks are completely straight. You know. Other felling axes, American felling axes and as well, the thin and other axes by Landwerke Forge, which I have reviewed in the same series, so please have a look at those. They have convex cheeks, that means the cheeks are rounded, they're thicker in the middle and they're a little bit thinner on at the heel and down, uh, at the toe, sorry, and down at the heel. That just gives a better capability of chipping out pieces which is very very efficient and very comfortable to use. So in general I find Grenzfuss Brooks Axis, now that I tried it, you know, after I watched some videos of Skill Cult, please check out my friend Stefan I think, Steven, at home from Skill Cult. He knows a lot about felling and felling axes because he's doing all his firewood. Um, purely with axes, which is amazing. And he has tried out a lot of different patterns and he finds especially Swedish pattern axes, so probably as well the Wettelings and the Husqvarna, to be quite sticky in the wood because they are completely straight cheek. They basically have straight bevels. Then this axe has a convex grind, which is a very nice feature, which is basically a, um, on this axe at least, because it's already pretty thin and putting in another detail on shot right here. The convex is not very round, um, so this definitely goes very deep into wood. It's just sometimes a little bit hard to get out again. So, you know, this doesn't make a lot of difference, I have to mention. If you're just on a canoe trip and you're doing a little bit of firewood processing, it doesn't make a lot of difference. It makes a difference if you're chopping, excuse me, limbing, and um, yeah, chopping and limbing all day long, you know, felling trees, especially bucking the tree up with an axe, it makes a huge difference. So again, at the length of this axe, being usable with two hands, being usable with one hand, does this make a lot of difference? Probably not, because this is not going to be an axe that you're going to do a whole cord of firewood with. So maybe we just want to put this um, point aside a little bit about the straight cheeks and I wanted to mention as well at this point as far as the handle goes Grandforce Brooks handles are among the best out there if you're getting a Grandforce Brooks axe you're gonna have a nice swell on the handle I hope you see that even from there you have a very nice ridge line going down the front so basically um, the cross section of these handles looks like an egg which are with a rather pointy top, if you if you will. And that gives you a very nice indexing on the inside of your knuckles where the blade is actually directed. Putting that much care and details into your handles is actually for modern production an incredible thing because this makes the production a lot more difficult. It makes it, um, you have a lot harder time to find a good piece of wood for these handles, etc, etc. So this is another feature that is really nice on these axes and the handles are rather slim and small. And if you look at very old felling axes from, um, you know, the people who still needed to use felling axes every single day, you see that those handles are very delicate, rather thin and incredibly well designed, if you will. And I think Grandfuss Brooks of all the production out there are doing the best job and um, basically stepping into those pretty big footsteps of those old proper um, lumberjack axes of um, the golden days of, of felling and woodworking axes, so to say.
so what why is this thing interesting maybe as well for a carving egg series well we're having about a 50 centimeter handle I would say and this can potentially get in the way a little bit however this axe is definitely not too heavy to be used with one hand so if you're getting yourself an axe <laughs> if you're getting yourself an axe like this that you want to take um, canoeing, hiking, bushcrafting whatever it is for your cottage um, you would be probably able as well to do your carving chops with this if you're just carving a little bit for fun um, this definitely comes in handy if you carve a paddle or something bigger like that but let's just pretend you, you want to carve a spoon with it so the slightly the slightly um, longer handle just um, requires to tilt the whole angle of, of the carving maybe slightly away from you like this but the high convex or the rather um, shallow angle of, of the convex grind actually bites very very nicely definitely so I'm just trying to use this some um, spalted piece of birch here a little bit and although it is a little bit different heavier 